If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of World of the Worlds 2020. Thanks so much for joining me. I know it's been a weird time. Um, everything getting cancelled and stuff has had me pretty, pretty unmotivated overall, honestly. Um, because what drives me, what has driven me all these years of playing Pokemon is the competition. The fact that you get to compete, you get to try and become the best in the world at the Pokemon trading card game and unfortunately this virus right now is taking that away from us. Now, <clears throat> thankfully we have the Limitless tournaments that are currently being organized and run. You can check out my other video, right? My other video if you haven't, um, if you haven't checked it out, they will be having four online qualifiers. The first one is happening Today, as you're watching this video, I wanted to show the deck that I am playing um, today at the tournament. Now, I did post it yesterday, even though all lists will be revealed. Um, like going through everything about the list, I felt like it was better to show this, and then hopefully I'm doing well at the tournament by the time this is being published. Um, Mewtwo Malamar, it's a deck that hasn't been seen or talked about in tournaments for a long time, which is part of the reason why I went back to it. I feel like it has potential, um, Trevnor and having all the versatility with Mewtwo is pretty good. And um, in Japan it did, it was doing pretty well um, at the beginning of the Sword and Shield format, so I'm hoping that that will remain the case for me. We have Mewtwo with its perfection ability allowing you to copy any attack from a GX or EX on your bench or in your Discard Ball. And so we have Megalopony and Jingle Buff to punish the resurging Pigram decks that are showing up here and there along with uh, Mirror Mewtwo matchups. We have Magnadol for Venom Shot Snipe. We have Dragonite GX for Sky Judgment big damage. We have um, Gengar Mimikyu for the turn one horror house for a potential dog and also the poltergeist punishing a big big hand. We also have Lydos GX for clear vision and the ADP matchup and tag perch for other tag teams. And we also have our good old Night Watch, which you know I love. We have Malmar Psychic Recharge to power ourselves up. We have a 2-3 line with the one data in case we need to venom shot around obstacles. And we have Axel for um for utility basically. Now as you can see I'm not using any playing I decided that for the tournament I would play with the action for this online tournament since it is the most prestigious online tournament we've ever had I would play with the more um, with what my deck would look like normally in real life right I guess these would be rainbow to tennis because for some reason I got those but everything else would be uh, regular art or full art but no shiny cards. Now it's a very straightforward deck, four of the important cards, Research, Marnie, Quick Ball and Treasure for consistency. We have Spinners, we have Church Ball, we have the Great Catcher, we have Balloons, we have Big Charms plus um, the Heretic Spell does put us out of range pretty much of ADP Station all the time so that's really really nice. And we have our Switches, our Recent Stamp and our Energy. So it's a pretty straightforward deck did want to showcase one or two games with it for today's video. It's been a while since we did this sort of uh, unique video for YouTube. It's all been 
um, Twitch streams, so I really appreciate the people who join in on Twitch. I just wanted to do this support. Hopefully, this series of tournaments, the online qualifiers, um, like I said, I break through everything about the Invitational, I mean, about the online qualifiers, online tournaments, and about the Invitational, because I would really appreciate your support if you decide to vote for me to appear in the Invitational. Um, so, yeah. Hoping this series of tournaments really gets the spark going for me again because I really do enjoy playing. Now, with this deck, I believe it's correct to choose to go second, except maybe against ADP. But that might be the only time when I would say, fine, let's choose to go first. Because you're not threatened to get dunked, pretty much. Um, this hand's pretty nice going second. Honestly, this hand is actually pretty nice going second. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Inke. It's the easiest to retreat. Definitely the easiest to retreat. Don't need to bench anything else. If I get resist time turn one, then so be it. So yeah, we shall see how this goes. Alright, so we see a Drachi. So, I didn't pay attention to the previous screen, so I actually have no clue what we are up against. I never understand how people can take so long. I uh, still wish, um, especially in turn one, like your turn is not this like, very straightforward for the most part. decides to fail it. Okay, that was a very odd turn one for my opponent. So I don't mind thinning all these energies, honestly. I really don't, especially setting up a second Inke here. Uh, so what did I prize? Three, four, uh, one energy, one research, one Marnie. That's fine. Those are okay prizes. Uh, one quick ball. One Cherish and one Mutri, so not terrible prizes, honestly. So I kind of wouldn't mind the pivot. So, but already having a Dene occupying the Discard Pile is not ideal. So I'm gonna attach here. I don't know what I'm up against still. Uh, now we do know my opponent's start was very slow though. But I'm gonna Marty anyways, either this turn or next turn, so I might as well do it now, even though my point start was that slow. And this is a very good follow-up turn, hopefully we'll know more. But what to expect from my opponent? I could go ahead and quick ball, honestly. I wouldn't mind going for a quick ball for the Absol, just to mess with my point charge. I think I'm gonna go for that. I think doing that makes a lot of sense. And we are down to very few energies in the deck now, only three, but that's okay because we recover them. So, solid turn one. You know, it's very, very solid turn one. We did get to attack our opponent's hand, but realistically... Realistically, wow, a third Drachi end of the deck. So we still have absolutely no clue what we are up against. Hopefully this dead change will reveal more information. Okay, there's a heat trend. So some sort of firebox now. Finally we know that we are up against some sort of firebox. There's a Debit Change, Discarding Fireflint, and Snorlax, alright. So that's what we're up against. The Snorlax VMAX firebox deck. Alright. So not sure if we will actually run into that um, to, uh, during the tournament, like I, I'm recording this one day before, so I was gonna say tomorrow, but you guys are watching this on Saturday, so I don't know. Um, another great ball. But this time, 
I'm assuming it's gonna be fodder for the fireplace. No, not quite. Alright. No Snorlax in sight yet. Failing first. Trying to find that Snorlax, I presume. Nope, it's gonna be Ninetales this time, so. Ninetales could be really annoying for this deck. Uh, not only KOing the Malamars, but also. Okay, so. I need a switching card no matter what. Right, so I might as well attach here and uh, research of the switching card that's perfect. And so I get to attack my opponent's hand. Best card to hit would be the nine tails, honestly. So I'm gonna keep this switch. I'm gonna attach the air bubble. And then there's no way I get one killed, so might as well just night watch here. I really wouldn't mind getting rid of the nine tails here though. Pokecom and energy. Not terrible, not the best. Having the Gearix Hall is really, really nice. The Gearix Hall plus the big charms basically put us out of range of ADP every time of an ADP 1k, Sajin 1k rather. So that's really, really cool. I don't know what my opponent's hand looks like. Probably mostly energy. Now I see a quick ball. Now we do see a quick ball. And there's the discard, there's the Vulpix. Interesting that he goes and sets up another Vulpix. No, he's just dead at changing. Okay, so all in on this Heatran, which can be great catcher, which is fine. And as long as I can one kill the Heatran, which I can thanks to Megalopony, right? I should be in a fine spot. And we see the escape board. So the next turn, Marnie plus plus Night Watch will be pretty detrimental, but my opponent chooses to go Steaming Stump. Interestingly enough. So I'm thinking that if I can power up this Mewtree and Night Watch, that would be fantastic. Right? So I wanna big charm this guy. And then I might as well thin as much as I can. Oh, yeah, actually, never mind. If I get the Malamar, I just KO this guy. Why would I want to Night Watch? Uh, sure, it doesn't matter. I guess I shouldn't reveal that. Um, I will play a Switch. And so we need Malamar. We need Treasure or Malamar over the next five cards. There we go. Perfectly, perfectly done here. And the best part is we can potentially heal our our sorry our mu three next turn thanks to our GX and this guy as well. Though of all four cards with that board and an Absol, I'm not sure what my problem will be. like his best tactic might actually be to try and bring this guy up and be annoying with that. So Jimmy Alone does get the knockout, pretty nice. Punish the double the DNA usage plus the heat trend get two cards. We do get a Marnie, which is nice, because then we get to continue to search for a switch if we need to. And things are looking pretty nice. Things are looking pretty good here. Fully expect to be getting a win as our next turn. We're definitely carrying a Jirachi, probably. And we couldn't even promote it this one. Maybe for getting about my apps off. Does find Welder, does have Fire Crystal, the question is, does he have something to use it on? That's not that dangerous. You would assume he does. Uh, plays the other skateboard. Plays a switch. So like, why play the escape board there? I just, I don't know. The sequencing of things not being optimal for sure. See the Pokegum, okay, so you'd expect a Snorlax V to finally show up, right? Personally, I'm not too worried. I am actually not too worried. There's a V Max being shuffled back into the deck. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be damaged, so I don't need to GX, honestly. There's a Snorlax V. 
I can't target it down, I can't ghost it up no matter what. I could double target it with double venom shots. And the attack does 60 plus 30, so it's 210 maximum damage. We are good. Quick ball. Why not even need to Marty? In order to get the five cards. Uh, that big teeny four. Never mind. Yeah, we're not worried about big teeny. Okay, so my opponent makes the Marty even better for us. Go ahead and do this. Grab the Gengar Q, and then. I honestly want to Psychic Recharge here just for retreating purposes. Now everything retreats for a single energy. And then we'll go Night Watch. Off of one card with absolute play, I just, I don't see how my opponent can win here. And we haven't won yet, right? We still need an energy on this wheel 3. But that shouldn't be too tough to get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's still... I haven't found my energy for my press card, so there's still an energy and an energy spinner left in my deck. If I don't hit either of those, then I would need double switch, which is annoying. With a dead psychic recharge. Alright. Falling down. Okay. So 220 damage. Snorlax does go to sleep, that's okay. We find a balloon. Um oh wait, I just I just went. I just GX the the ten, right? I just GX the Dene. Very nice. Miraculous duo. Or jumping problem, even. I didn't even need to use my GX attack. Very nice. So there's the energy, there's the research. And pretty, pretty straightforward win, that's for sure. Pretty straightforward win. Alright. So. Let's. Let's, 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 let's. Click on play, if this ever lets me click on play. Alright. Alright. Okay. So like I said, I think this deck doesn't want to go first. Except maybe in the Station ADP matchup. Pokedot GX. <laughs> so terrible hand for us, that's for sure. Absolutely terrible hand. We do need a solid top deck. We have essentially two turns to top deck. That's not terrible. Going second also allows for situations such as this one. That's beautiful. So we might just get the bomb. You're seeing exactly why. Yeah, my opponent is well played. <laughs> my opponent is well played. We both know what that means. If I hadn't top decked, right? If I hadn't top decked that the Dene, we would have had one more turn. Now I have the energy. I don't want to have Marnie because that decreases my chance of getting the KO. Now I just Horror House. My opponent does Blazer. We attach and. Win. All right. Yeah. So going second gives like this. When you choose to go second, this has a high chance of happening. One, two, and three. Just enough, right? So you're gonna wonder if my opponent top picked that Poke Gear, or if he simply chose not to play it because he was gonna Elms next turn. I feel like if you see this guy, um, you might want to play it. Especially if you don't have our basic, or he top decked the Victini Prism. So, well, he couldn't have top decked both. So, either way, that was a small mistake by my opponents. You know, that was definitely a small mistake. He could have avoided this. He could have kept himself in the game by either burning the Poke here, ensuring, almost ensuring that he only had two trainers, or benching a Pokemon and therefore not getting benched out. So. I actually think that was a really good showcase as to why this deck has merits to go second. I know I've been adamant about going second a lot of the time. Um, I think with this deck it is correct. Um, but if you're up against Asian ADP, 
going first might be better, and if you don't know what you're up against, then do you really want to risk giving Sage and ADP the turn one um, attachment? I don't know. That will be all for me. Don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. Hope you're supporting me in the tournament. And I would love it, love it, love it if you voted for me in the Limitless Invitational. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time. Bye-bye.